Hey, what's going on again, everybody? It is Brian. I'm back again with another quick little review for you guys. Please make sure you're subscribing, hitting that like button. Let me know what kind of things you're wanting me to check out up future wise thinking, future forward, forward thinking in the future here on the channel. So today I have a really special bottle. Uh, I had a buddy who came over earlier this week and we had some pours out on the patio and one of the ones that he brought for us to open was the Evan Williams 23. So thank you to Michael for bringing this over. Michael was on the Starlight Picks with us that you heard me talk about on the last video as well as on the Intraproof podcast. Uh, but again, I have not had the best history with Heaven Hill products. Uh, maybe I didn't have the most diverse history with Heaven Hill products, but for a short period of time, well, rather to relatively uh, short to medium length time, when I first got into whiskey, uh, as I tried Heaven Hill products that I found on the shelf, I just couldn't find a product that I really enjoyed. I found a lot of products to be too hot, um, too uh, dry, and uh, especially Elijah Craig Barrel Proofs at the time, I just I just couldn't drink them. Um, and it wasn't until I started to come into some of the, I don't want to say allocated, but the harder to find releases that I realized, oh, Heaven Hill has honey barrels. Oh, Heaven Hill does have uh, things that I enjoy about their profile. And even as I was drinking um, some other whiskeys that might have been sourced things from Heaven Hill, single barrel products, I started to realize that there were flavors about the profile I like, and in fact, that I very much enjoyed it. So this wasn't even something that was on my watch list of wanting to open necessarily. Um, I didn't pay attention to it, what it retailed was, if it was easy to find or not, but apparently it can be found relatively easily, or maybe it used to be either at the Bourbon Heritage Center or at the Evan Williams Experience downtown. So what's interesting about this is it uses what a bottom shelf Heaven Hill product name, Evan Williams, but it's age 23 years. So now that we're in 2020, uh, it's probably not presumed that it is pre-fire juice that's in here. Maybe there's some, I'm not exactly sure. But one thing I did want to point out about this bottle, last I checked, I'm pretty sure the MSRP on this is like $350, which is a little bit ridiculous. But when you think about a product that is 107 proof, that's 23 years old, if this was in a different bottle, let's just leave it at that, I think people would be paying two or $3,000 on the secondary market for the juice that's in here. So let's go ahead and give this a little bit of a summary of what I think about it. Immediately on the palate, you get cherry, you get tobacco, you get barrel char. And I will say that on first opening this bottle, it was not as impressive, uh, but it didn't take very long into having the cork off the bottle is by the time we poured our second glass that we realized, okay, there are some flavors here that are enjoyable. It's got this slight licorice quality that matches with that cherry. That's not all that unlike what I find in Wild Turkey or other aged Heaven Hill products or um, some of the um, um, NDP releases from products, uh, from, from folks, their products that they're putting out. So it's a familiar um, nose to some old aged whiskeys mixed with some um, powder sugar sweetness, some kind of candied sweetness with some well-aged leather, worn leather, some well-aged oak, as well as some fresh wood mixed in there as well. There's a little bit of honey in there. And what's interesting about it in general is that it has almost like it's a, it's a, it's it's a thicker, slightly more savory, yet still sweet nose. It's something that kind of comes off like um, like a country ham, almost, but in a really good way. It's like a candied, sugary country ham. So it's both thick on the nostrils and savory, but also has some sweetness to it. Let's go ahead to the palate. Now, it's a huge surge of flavor in a multitude of ways. It is very oaky at first. Now, I do like a well-aged bourbon, and I will say it's not as tannic as a lot of things are, and not as tannic as I would have thought from 23 years of age. 
again, very breakfasty. It has savory notes as well as sweet notes. I'm gonna go in for another sip real quick, but I will say the cascade of flavor across the palate here did kind of um, rush with some drying notes. Even though it's uh, really long lasting on the palate, it did kind of wave with uh, some dryingness after the first initial impressions. Fresh cut grass, tobacco, raspberry, cherry. This like salty, savory characteristic again, like honey baked ham. Chewy, um, then finishes with some more like kind of licorice and spice. And it, ha it changes so much as you're sipping it. I will say, initially, not all that complex of a pour. And to me, I feel like if I'm spending a lot of money, there are a couple things that I really factor in, even if I'm not spending a lot of money. For me with a pour, there are a couple things I factor. I wanna know what the mouth feels like, what the weight of it's like. I want it to really be um, filling and mouth coating if possible. And I like complexity. I like something that has nuance that I can kind of pull out each sip there's something new. And while there are certain nuances I can pull out from this, it seems like it, still kind of hits around some of these same flavors that I've already mentioned. Now I will say, and I know this from, oh, now we're coming back to some stewed fruit, some saturated, like the wine grape sweetness, or some raspberries, some cranberries, um, some dried fruits, maybe even a pop of apricot, it has this kind of elegant brightness that's come up as well. Maybe that's part of what I said earlier, saltiness. It starts to become a little bit more elegant as it sits. Um, I will say from the time the other day where we had this outside, it is something that when you sit with it over time, you spend some time with it and when you have a pour or two of it, it does open more. You do notice a little bit more flavors. Uh, and I love the flavors that it does have. I just think for me, for something that's going to cost me out of pocket $350, I just wish it had a little bit more complexity, even though it checks the boxes of well-aged, oakiness, really great mouthfeel, and carries some really good flavors. So again, I will say, this is a really good pour, and its setback is its cost, its MSRP. But what you get in this, and I will make another mention to what I mentioned earlier in the video, compared to what I think people would pay for this if it was presented differently, What you get is a beautiful example of an ultra-aged whiskey at a really satisfying proof with really satisfying flavor. So that again is the Evan Williams 23 year. Again, thanks so much, Michael, for allowing me to borrow this bottle while I take a sip of it. I'll bring it back to you, promise. If there are bottles that you want me to check out, please leave comments below, let me know. Feel free to check out the Entry Proof Podcast. It's a podcast that I do with Drew P. Whiskey. And we interview people and we talk about a whole bunch of cool stuff. But it's just an extension of what you can get on this channel. Or most of you who have come to this video probably already know me from this channel. Feel free to su uh, subscribe or to uh, join us on Patreon. Patreon.com slash Entry Proof Podcast. That's a way that you can support what we're doing in the content creation side of things. Be it the podcast, uh, barrel picks, or more content like this. Until next time. We'll see you guys.